hear my voice, says the Lord. I know them, and they follow me. According to Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus entered the temple area and proceeded to drive out those who were selling things, saying to them, It is written, My house shall be a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. And every day he was teaching in the temple area. The chief priests, the scribes, and the leaders of the people, meanwhile, were seeking to put him to death, but they could find no way to accomplish their purpose because all the people were hanging on his words. The Gospel of the Lord. Again, one of the options today is to celebrate the dedication of the basilicas of St. Peter and St. Paul. There's four major basilicas in the Catholic Church. The St. Peter's Basilica, the one you see on TV all the time with the big colonnade. In fact, if you look at it from the sky and you see the footprint of that church, it looks like a big skeleton key. And the idea is that Peter has the keys of the kingdom. And so the architecture models that if you look at it from the sky. And then you have St. Paul outside the walls of Vatican City and there's St. Mary Major, and then just not so long ago, we celebrated the, the dedication of St. John Lateran, and that's the Pope's Cathedral Church. But we're not celebrating the building. The building is only a sign that really develops and uncovers the heart of what the church is, and it's not the buildings. It's what's inside the buildings. We are called to be this mystical body of Christ, Christ has come into this world to reveal to the world that they are loved by God and that God loved them so much that he was willing to do that to show the depth of his loves, to be, to be nailed to the cross so that people might be moved to see, look, I have come to show the world what real love is. This weekend in the Catholic Church, it's the last Sunday in what we call ordinary time. Ordinary is not just regular old time. It's, it's this time when we just count the Sundays in order. So it's the 34th Sunday in ordinary time, the last one. And we celebrate the feast of Christ the King. Now, I don't know if you've seen the movie For Greater Glory, but it is a great movie. Probably not a movie for little children because it's pretty violent. It shows the, the battle that went on in Mexico in the 20s and 30s um, to protect religious liberty. There was a socialistic government that was coming and taking power and they were trying to silence the church and destroy it. And yet the simple people rose up. And if you go among, I, I bet you there's enough uh, Hispanic heritage people in here that if I say, Viva Cristo Rey! Viva. Que viva! <laughs> okay, <laughs> which is uh, Jesus Christ, he lives. Yes, he lives. And these people were known as the Cristeros. They wouldn't allow the government to take away their freedom to worship Christ. And they were successful at kind of getting the laws taken back to let them practice their religious faith freely. But it's, it's an incredible movie. And, and one of the main characters in this movie is a retired general who really was an agnostic. If not, he didn't really believe in God. But he realized that that what the government was trying to do, it was robbing them, the people of their freedom. So anyways, it's just a beautiful movie to watch, to see the depth of people's faith, particularly, particularly this young little boy. This young little boy who had great faith and sadly gave up his life for it. I, I mean, it's a sad movie, but it shows the depth of what it means to believe in something. Just last night, I had some old friends come over and... Um, both of them, uh, I, I actually, they had a tragedy in their life. Uh, they lost a son through a 
a tragic car accident. I happened to be the pastor of another parish, not here, but in another place probably 10 or 15 years ago. And that's how I got to know the family a little bit better. And, and the thing that, one of the conversations that we had last night was, was really powerful to me. And he was talking about when they found out that his first son was, uh, you know, that he was coming along the way and then they had the ultrasound. And he said, you know, the first time I saw that child move, it changed me. And then I heard the heartbeat and that changed me again. It just changes us when we recognize how important each and every one of us is. Do you guys remember who you are? Who are you? Well, I'm not talking about your name, but you are an infinitely valuable, one of a kind, masterpiece created by God for a mission. In other words, God has big plans for each and every one of you, all right? And you as parents and the people who take care of these children know how much sacrifice there's involved in that, right? You provide food, shelter. You've given them the opportunity to come to this, to this school where we can actually talk about Jesus. And we can make Jesus the center of our lives because he needs to be. And, and that's everything. And you've made all kinds of sacrifices, right? Now, oftentimes, children are not aware of the depth of those sacrifices you make. In other words, they're not usually effusive in their praise, saying, oh, mom, dad, thank you for my clothes and the, and, and, and the food and, and the house and paying the heat bills and doing all that. Oh, thank you so much. And by the way, mom, dad, when you discipline me, oh, man, do I appreciate that because I know that you're doing this for my betterment and to make me a better human being. I just really appreciate all that you do for me and thank you. Kids aren't usually like that, right? But you know what? It is right and just for children to give thanks and praise to their parents. So guys, try and make sure you say thanks mom and dad. So like on Thanksgiving when you're sitting around, just say thank you. Thank you for my home. Thank you for giving me life. Thank you. Thank you. Try and always remember to be filled with gratitude for everything. And so my brothers and sisters too, um, why, why do we go to church on Sunday? We go to church on Sunday basically for the same reason, just to say thank you to God. Because a lot of people, the, the, what's going on in our world right now is not a battle between right and left and all this political nonsense. It's, it's a spiritual battle. And if you're going to war with someone, the first thing you need to do is you need to cut off the supply lines. And by doing that, what are those supply lines? For us, it's God's grace. When we come to Mass, we are flooded with God's grace. Little second grade, this, this nun in second grade, I think it was, who said, you know, when you go to Mass, it's like going to the gas station. Or I guess plug in your electric car if you have an electric car. But nonetheless, okay, it's like being filled up. And so what has the devil done? He, in the last hundred years, he has convinced vast segments of our population, and I think almost all our ruling class, to believe that God's not a reality, that God doesn't touch our daily lives. It's a personal matter. And so you can believe whatever you want, but don't dare say anything out loud about it. And if you do, you might get canceled. Well, that's not right. And so we have this, they cut, and so in, in colleges and universities, they present religion at best as a, as a helpful myth. You know, that God isn't really a reality, that Jesus really didn't die on the cross, but he did. And so that's the first thing. You get people not coming to church, you get people not believing in this stuff really, where it changes their life. And then after that, what do you do? You divide and conquer. You try and get one group of people to hate the other group so that we're all divided within. And this is what we must battle against. We must strive to be the peacemakers. We must strive to see and help others recognize the infinite dignity that they have as an infinitely valuable, one-of-a-kind masterpiece created by God for a mission. And they say in polite company, you know, we should never talk about religion and politics. And I, I wouldn't even develop, delve into politics at all because it's so much confusion and you don't know what to believe. But you know what I would say? 
Talk about your faith. And I'm not just talking to the Catholics. I'm sure there's some non-Catholics here too. Talk about your faith because Christ is so important and it's important for us to do what we can to help the world understand that Jesus is super important. All right? It's such a great gift that we have that we can try and turn our culture towards understanding what is true, good, and beautiful. And we celebrate this great feast, the feast of Christ the King. All right? So my brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge um, that we can hopefully come together and be strengthened by God's grace and know that God loves you just like he ha loves these children and that you are an infinitely valuable, one-of-a-kind masterpiece created by God for a mission. That will, bring pre that will bring peace to our world. It will bring pre peace to our families. And it will fill the world with joy. Because whenever we encounter the truth, we always experience joy. Whether that be the solution to a complex math problem or whatever it might be. So my brothers and sisters, let us seek Christ. Let us do what we might to help each other and grow strong in our faith. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us stand as we bring our prayers and intercession before the Lord. Our Francis, our Pope, and Kevin, our Bishop, that they may be filled with the Holy Spirit and their teaching the good news. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are sick, suffering, or in any kind of danger, that they would experience the healing power of Christ's love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may imitate Mary, our mother, so we may show awe and wonder for the gift of human life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who make up the Church of Jesus Christ, that we may be a true house of prayer, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our, for our school, that we would serve others in all that we do, and work to love others as Christ loved us, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have passed away, especially for Barbara Dudek, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for peace in Ukraine, in our world, and for all nations who suffer under tyrannical or incompetent rule. We pray to the Lord. Lord Heavenly Father, hear the prayers of the people gathered here before you. Answer them insofar as they meet our deepest needs and are in accord with your holy and divine will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The offertory hymn is number 650 in the glory and praise. Prayer of St. Francis, number 650 in the glory and praise. 